So good morning and good um, afternoon, depending on where we are tuning from. It's such an honor to be here today and speak to these wonderful and great people. And um, I've just written a bit of an intro about the Poor Monday. And this is quite very helpful to be able to inspire people to start the week strong. I often have a mantra that says that things don't go wrong, they start wrong. How you started something matters because it is foundation for its sustainability. Um, I'm here for a very short um, or few minutes, and therefore I'm not going to indulge you a lot. As has been introduced, my name is Gabriel Nyamu. Um, I think among all the things that have been spoken there, the key focus is that, of course, I'm a husband, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a father. I think those are the core holes there. Uh, but much more in the marketplace, I engage as a purpose coach, and I'll be going to talk about that in a few. And I don't know what, when you heard about this topic for today, um, the search for purpose, the meaning of life, the why we are here, what really goes through your mind? And I think that's something that I engage on a daily basis. So um, I don't know, uh, maybe from uh, the host, uh, how much time maybe you want me to indulge because I can see time is gone. So maybe 40 minutes or thereabout. Yeah, uh, you can. You can go in, uh, you can speak all the way to for 30 minutes plus, then by by 8.05 thereabout, we should be done so that we start winding up uh, with uh, any uh, vote of thanks, whatever, which should end okay. by 8.15. All right, absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm going to make sure Lisa is here to that time. Great. So with that then, I, I will probably rush a bit in terms of um, the things that I'll be sharing uh, without indulging you a lot. But because I'm sure this has been recorded, you can be able to replay it. So we had to talk about purpose and adventuring. In the introduction about myself, there's one thing that summarizes my life in terms of my mantra. Just to enable human potential to live F-I-T, fit, fit, to live fit. Now F-I-T means fulfilling, impactful, and transcending life. I think it's by human divine nature that there is a deep desire and longing for every human being, first of all, to be fulfilled with life, what we do on a daily basis, and the areas that we engage in the business or probably even in our career. But also we want to also have a sense of impact. How are we impacting our spaces, the planet, the people, the creation? And finally, there's always a quest. At the end of the day, can I be a voice or a generational trustee that whatever I do today can be able to live tomorrow, can influence the generation to come. That's the transcending nature. That's what I call fit living, FIT, fulfilling, impactful, and transcending life. And I do this through coaching in terms of working with people to help them discover their life purpose, leverage their life purpose, whether it's in career or also in business. How do you make sure at least you can be able to turn up your uh, purpose, which is God-given literally, and you can make it your lifetime. And you know, purpose has no retirement. You can retire from a job, but you can never retire from your life purpose. You can be fired from a job, but nobody can fire you from your life purpose or your life assignment because that's God given unless you disobey it. But there's a tendency to think like our life purpose is quite something that can we cannot actually bank on, we cannot live by, and therefore we have to do other things other than pursuing God assignment upon our life. I want just to do a question here. What do you what do you see on the on the screen? If you can be able to see it. Anybody who can type, because I know we are many, just put on the chat. What do you see on the screen? You can put on the chat. Hey, Nene, I can see a 62 of us here. Aha, opportunity. Thank you, Radia. Anybody else? Opportunity. <laughs> All right. Montana, opportunity now here. Aha, Ken Guami. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. Opportunity now here. <laughs> Sam. Great. All right. Good, good, good. I wish I had that time for me to, to dissect on this, but thank you for that feedback. The people who are seeing the way it is, so copy paste of what you find there. <laughs> But also people who are seeing opportunity nowhere. So if the no comes and strike you much, that probably could be something that you see the difference between the three words, opportunity nowhere. 
But also people also see three words again, but they are seeing opportunity now here. And this is a component of the power of the mind because usually say mostly you become a slave of what you know because truth is a form of light. It illuminates your consciousness and your mind. And sometimes you respond to reality based on the truth that sits within you. So you can be looking at the same thing, but you're going to draw up your own reality of what you see. And quite often, the whole game is in the mindset. And when it comes to life and how we view life and jobs and businesses and career and many other things, that's the same concept. I'm going to give you a background a little bit about this on how I ended up in the purpose coaching space. I worked in the banking uh, and in the last 20 years, uh, 20 years ago, actually, I joined a bank, one of the leading top tier one bank in Kenya, and I was posted in HR. And in my third year of career, we did a retrenchment. That is back in 2017, 2008, uh, 2008 not 2017, 2007 and 2008. We were doing uh, what you call a restructuring for the bank. And we did a retrenchment and we declared redundancy. And most of the people who have been uh, released were people who had served for 20 years, 30 years. The highest was actually 34 years. Imagine somebody who have worked for 34 years. Most of them were senior management and even including C-level, that is directors. And when we were preparing them to leave out, we had hired guys from UK to come and teach them about finances, how to manage investments, how to make sure at least the, the small severance package you take home you don't go and um, you know misuse it. So we had done all what an employer can do. I was put in the benefit section that time. I was a section head in my third year of career, that is 207. And I happened to talk to 97 out of one or four people that we are releasing. Because I was in HR, I had privilege to talk to everybody because I was the one calculating their terminal benefits when they were leaving. So I sat with them and they sat on my desk because 20 years ago, we were not so much digitized. So things were done on a spreadsheet in an Excel, and therefore someone had to come and manually come and sign the terminal benefits. So out of the 97 I talked to, 94 were very bitter. Um, what do I mean? They were very bitter. They were bitter because they were being retrenched. They are being sent home. They thought maybe they are going to retire there and all that. And, and it confused me because I was three years old in the employment, and therefore I also had my ambitions. I want to become a CEO one day. And uh, I'll just give a story of one lady who had served for to the bank, well, served the bank 27 years. All the children had gone out of school. They were actually working abroad. Now, what happened is that she was also was well, well invested. I can say she was living in the top estate in a lobby. She was learning some real estate. She was a hard road literally. She was a farmer, hundreds of acres of ranch. Um, and I know in all manner of what you may call success in quotes, perfect. Children is a, what you may call an empty nest. No child, no diapers. No. This is a person who has accepted everything in life. And she was almost a C-level uh, person within the organization, the entire one bank. And she sat on my desk. And when I look at the, ca the ca calculation of her terminal benefit, she was taking home quite a good amount of money. You can imagine 20 years ago taking home more than 10 million cash money. And this is just what you call a package just to go and you kind of survive with that. And she sat on my desk and told me, Gabriel, I'm happy that the bank is giving me this kind of a package. I have served the bank for 27 years. My children are abroad. They are all working. I don't have any dependent right now. And I, therefore, it's me and my highest bud. But I still feel I'm going home empty. And I looked at her and actually my heart melted. And I was very young, in my 20s. I, I started questioning. I thought what you have is what success is all about. I mean, I grew up my children, they, they are working abroad. I've achieved my academic pursuits. I have built my house. She didn't have any loan, no mortgage, no car, no mortgage, everything loan free. And she was taking home more than 10 million as severance package. She was a hard road. She is a farmer, big lunches because in HR, sometimes you access some of this information. Then you're telling me you feel you're going home empty. And that was the start of my journey in searching for what is this that will make you still feel empty, even when you have achieved anything, checklist, everything you think is right, right, and right. And I thought I have seen it later, but this is way later is when I, I was in Rwanda, uh, sorry, in, uh, in Uganda, in Kampara, and I met a business person who has been learning a business in seven countries, multi-billionaire, and in an exchange in a golf club, 
um, just uh, in the evening. We happened to know each other and started asking me what I do. I told him what I do. I asked him what he do. He told me what he do. And um, he gave me the story. He told me, Gabriel, I have this business. It has grown. We are in more than seven countries. But I was happy 10 years ago, I think, than today. Then I asked him, How, what do you mean? 10 years ago, you are more happier. You are more fulfilled than today. Then I asked him to tell him more. So he told me 10 years ago, he had made enough money that he felt he had achieved financial freedom. In fact, he made a comment that shocked me because he told me, I think I had created generational wealth for up to the fourth generation, like the way Bible says, that my fourth generation, I think I had secured them. And that time I had 60 employees. That's him saying. So 60 employees are a very small number. You can wake up and shut up down the business and close up and pay them a one year salary in Leo and you go home and do other things. But he told me right now I have 1,500 employees spread in seven countries. I cannot make a stupid decision to close my business because the next day I'll appear in the top media news, breaking news. This And it's a business actually most likely, if I mentioned you may know, uh, because it's a big business. So he told me I cannot make that stupid, stupid move to close the business right now. But the reason why I started it, I think it was finances. I achieved it a bit while back. So I don't know what exactly I'm doing. And I looked at him and I asked him one question. Why did you start the business from the word go? And the conversation still went again to the purpose issue. Now, when you succeed in the wrong direction, it is not success. You can achieve things in life. And I know we are busy pursuing success and things. But if they're in the wrong direction, there will still be voidiness and there will be a lot of emptiness. And it takes a huge mindset to be able to align ourselves into that. Now, uh, in my life, I have seen people usually transform or change because of three things. One, if their mind is open, if you get elimination of your mind. Number two, if your heart is broken, sometimes you need to lose a relationship to learn how to manage good relationships when your heart is broken. Sometimes you need to be auctioned to learn financial discipline. But also, there are people also experience something they call a spiritual encounter. In your meditation, God encounter you and kind of give you a conviction and you have a revelation and you live. I don't know by your standards how your life has been in terms of your turning point, which among of these has been your key turning points in your life. But I want to give you some perspective. There are things that are happening in the world today. I'm building up a business case for the presentation. We have too much knowledge without conviction. A doctor will tell you stop smoking, but the same doctor will go to the balcony after the consultancy and they start smoking themselves. Do they lack knowledge? No. We have too much knowledge in the world, but we lack conviction in the truth of that knowledge. People are seeking too much knowledge every day, a workshop after a workshop, but they are not totally in a minute to ask themselves, what is the conviction am I getting from this? We have work without gainful meaning. Work, 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 being busy, but not in business. Even without direction. Relationships without love. I'm running a bit past here. Profit without purpose. I like the gentleman I've just shared from Uganda. Spirituality without God. People are very spiritual, but no God in that equation. Growth without impact. Wealth without health. I think I, think I, I had a conversation about work-life integration. So you need wealth, but also with health. And then find that we have too much intelligence without absolute truth. There's no security of truth in terms of this is absolute. And Neon was supposed for those who are believers, God is the only absolute. But there's too much intelligence, but we want to do it without any absolute truth. Why am I heading to? Um, I love quoting the Bible, and you allow me to quote scripture just for people to learn some principles here. There's a scripture here in the book of Acts. David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, he fell asleep and was laid down in further than so corruption. That means there's a purpose that David was serving during his own generation. Now, question for you, in the current generation you are in, what is it that you owe the creation right now? Because when you're born, you're born within a generation. Your purpose and your life assignment is attached to the current generation, not 17th century. Every generation has its own heritage, and people born within a generation, they fulfill their purpose within that age. So it's God's purpose that's not yours. It's a service to humanity, but as well, it should be within the current generation. What is that that you found as your life assignment? And just to help us, I believe, and this is my perspective, that every human being has a purpose through which you should impact people and planet. So you impact two things. You impact the planet, that's God's creation still, 
And also people who is God's intent and God's focus is always on people. So how is your life? How is your uh, occupation? How is your profession? How is your business impacting people and the planet? And are you born for yourself? Were you born for your own selfish achievement? You come to discover it actually when you focus your life too much on just um, get a house, buy a nice car, finish that extra degree and I'll do my second PhD and that PhD, or investing in you without feeding output outwards or impact outwards, towards the, your sunset, you are going to still feel empty. And I happen to speak in so many engagements People when they are retiring, outplacement services, and you talk to people actually, they are quite empty towards the day. Why? They were just living for themselves. Now, a question for you: What would creation miss if you are never born? If I had time, actually, I could have allowed you to reflect on that. Would creation miss anything if you are never born? You never existed. It's a big question for all of us, and. Such things must stop with you. Just because you are living, there are things must stop. Corruption must stop with me. Apartheid, like Nelson Mandela, must stop with me. You know, which are the things in your commitments and your convictions must stop with you in your age? That will be written in history. When so and so live, these things stopped. And what things should continue through you? And finally, which things must stop with you? Even in your own family, you can say, we have not had a trace of this. But with this, we are going to start, going to start with me. I'll give you another story. I happened to consult for a, a, an automobile company in Singapore. And it's one of the biggest, actually, automobile top three in Singapore. And I happened to talk to the founder, uh, not founder, but uh, the chairman currently of that uh, business. It's a 300-year-old business. In Kenya, we know, and in Africa, businesses rarely even transcend even beyond second generation. You leave to your children and everything is gone. And I asked this chairman, the chairman told me he is in the eighth generation of the family, eighth. The business is 300 year old. And I asked him, how have you been able to sustain consistency of your business for 300 years? He told me one thing. When we are handing over our business to our children, our great great grandfathers taught us one thing. We don't hand over balance sheet, share certificate, um, log books, those income statements, we don't hand over those ones. The only thing we hand over to our family and our children is the convictions of why we started this business, the conviction of why our forefathers started this business. And by that, every generation generously guard it because they understand the why. Most of us only, when you look at the wheel, we write wheels. There's no way I mostly find you in the wheel, people saying, this is the convictions I'm also giving you as a will in addition to the balance sheet. Most of us, we only focus on the asset. And that's where we go wrong. Because for that which you don't know the why it was started, you cannot sustain it. And this is the power of purpose as I'm building up my conversation. Now, one area of reflection is about work. God never established a job for a man. He established work. There's a difference between work and a job. We don't have time to we'll talk about that maybe another day. You only get fired or retired from a job, but not from your life purpose. Your life purpose is actually a lifetime. doesn't have retirement. A job is mostly for survival, and you can survive through your job, but your work will always impact people and the planet. Three major reflections for us. Let me talk about human quest. In 2021, when the COVID had hit us, we did a research. Uh, one of my background is in data. I love big data, data science, AI, those things. And in 2021, in June, we were just trying to keep ourselves busy on the internet. And uh, I have a team of data scientists. And we went on the net and we were doing something we call web scrapping. Web scrapping is how you can search and look at the website, internet of things, and check what are people searching currently as we speak, even this morning, if you want to know. We call it web scrapping. And you are doing this crap. Guess what? In June 2021, we found there are 1.5 billion online searches. Guess what people are asking for? How to find my life purpose. When our jobs were disrupted, you cannot go to job. Your business was closed down. You're working from home, just in virtual remote working. 
That time when the default setting, factory setting was reset, guess what humanity was looking for? They were not searching for the next holiday destination. They were not searching where to buy the next car, where, how to marry, who to marry. No. When you are kind of reset to the default, you start questioning, by the way, this life is all about what? Why am I here? And that serious voidness in every human being in search for meaning and purpose. Now, when you look at this in connection on how we start ventures and how we start uh, even businesses and all that, guess what? Um, in the workplace we are living in, we keep on being told by Garab News, nine out of 10 people are unhappy. They wake up every day to do things they hate, but they have to do it anyway because they have to survive. 87% of people are unhappy in the working place, especially marketplace. 60% of the current institutional learning that these people are studying in school and in college universities is for jobs that don't exist. Imagine doing a course for a job that doesn't exist. And then, of course, we know we have intelligence that is praising human judgment. Now, question is, if this is the disruption in the workplace, what is human left to do then? Because AI may take over some of the things that you're doing. And it might probably do it better. I interacted with a professor from Massachusetts, MIT, who was telling me, of course, how they are piloting surgical masks where you dislocate your heart or your leg and they will send you a mask. The doctor doesn't come anywhere. A mask is sent to you, maybe dropped by a robot, and you put your heart in that mask and the mask operates you head to head. A complete operation with no human. Now, if a job like that, which involves life and death, even the open heart surgery currently, brain surgery has been done by robots, then you tell us our finance, our accounting, our HR jobs, are that complicated? Not at all. Now, question is, if AI is replacing some of these things, what are we left to do then? Serious question. We don't have time to talk about this. Let's go to the business venture. When you ask people why they started businesses, even in Korea, they tell you most is freedom and passion, meaning you started something because you love it or you wanted to be your own boss. But I usually say that is very short-lived. And what keeps you? survival. I need to pay bills and a living, and that's how probably I live. And this is what is motivating people, survival. Many people have a sense of impact and generational impact that they are creating in their life. It doesn't stop there. It is because, look at also the research in terms of, uh, there's a body called CB Insight that were researching over 1,000 startups, and they were saying the top reason why businesses and startups fail is because there's no market need. Now, do you know where market need comes from? You can only identify market need if what you're doing is addressing a specific pain area in the market. And that's how purpose comes, because purpose is redemptive. You're addressing a gap that is already there, not a transaction. And I'm going to give you a, an example around that. And this now brings you to the heart of the conversation. The human beings struggle with these three things, identity, purpose, and destiny. Those are the things that we struggle. And the human quest, despite whatever even you're doing, whether in the scientific revolution and all things that we are searching for, new discoveries we're making, you find at the heart of it, a human being is struggling with identity. Who am I? A human being is struggling with purpose. Why am I here? And a human being is struggling with the destiny. Where will everything still end up? or in the space time that I live, let's say 100 years, is that all about life? 100 years only? It's a serious question in every human being. And it's good to have this elevated consciousness for all of us, for those who are in career world, for those who are also in business world, to make sure we have this. Because you're always a question, who am I? Where did I come from? Why was I born? Why am I here on earth space to do? And of course, what do you owe creation, which we call purpose debt? Everybody has a debt to pay. I often say that you have two debts to pay. You are paying the debt for China and World Bank. That's financial debt, economic debt. And you never took it because that one was taken by government. But the other core debt that you actually owe the world is your life purpose. What really will you owe creation or you owe creation before your consummation? We are driven by five human drives. The drive to acquire things, acquire assets, products. Uh, degrees, you know, status, positions. We also have a drive to board, connect, because we are social beings. Drive to learn, that's why we are here today, this morning. Drive to defend, 
and a drive to feel the emotions. But guess what? Most of us get jobs because of these things. But if purpose is not in the equation, there will never be fulfillment in your life. And we summarize these drives into three, the drive of having, the drive of doing, executing, finishing a project after another. People are busy executing things. But you know what? There is a key drive that is seated silent. The reason why we are called human beings. Who are you becoming? You come to discover that being is connected to your purpose. Now, this last drive is I was trying to say Nelson Mandela never brought liberation in South Africa. Professor Gary Mazai never brought green movement in Kenya, in Africa. And Jesus Christ never brought salvation in humanity. When I say that, I think you may wonder, what are you trying to say? Let me give you the perspective. They never brought, they never did, they became. And so Mandela became the liberation. There's a difference between becoming and doing it. Jesus Christ did not bring salvation. He became the salvation. There's a difference between you becoming something and doing it. Because you can do it, but you're not involved in the process. And the power of becoming is where most of us have not been introduced to. We are busy acquiring things. We are busy doing things, finishing things, project after project. But later we take time to question, who am I becoming? Now, um, we can, I can be able to summarize this and say we have different power dimensions within humanity. And this makes us different from the other creation. We have the power within us. We have the power over. We have the power to do. And we have the power to become something. If you didn't have this, then it seems that if you are born a thief, you will always be a thief. But because there is a power for becoming transformation, then you can be able to learn, acquire new skill sets, transform your mind, and automatically become a new being. Allow me to jump that. We have three human lives, and I think I'm almost coming to the close of my conversation in the next five minutes, probably. There's always the realm of survival, where you are hustling, paying bills, and a living. If you bypass that, you get to a realm we call engagement. In the engagement is where you are productivity, meaning you are productive. You can account time. Eight to five, you can tell me how you are doing eight to five. We call that engagement. It's productivity and performance. But there's an inner lamp called the lamp of impact. And this is where your life becomes redemptive. It has impact that it makes to the creation, to the people, and to the planet. And this is where your well-being is attached to. I don't know that you have ever asked yourself this. Are you a product of design? If we agree that we are all created, that means we are a product of a designer. The designer then must have an intent for you because you can't just create something without a desire or an intent within it. And that's where purpose comes. Now, any product of design then can only achieve your highest potential if the initial conditions that created you are all fulfilled. I may need a whole day workshop to explain that. But let me talk a little bit about this mystery of design. Do you know why um, insects are attracted to specific flowers? You find some insects in yellow flowers that they are not in the pink flowers? Because every flower is an ecosystem and the cara is a habitation. There are micro and billions of microbiome within that cara that actually host specific microorganisms that you can't see with your eyes. Why do you have eyes in front? Maybe you've never questioned. You know, eyes in front position you to be a predator. That's why you have cat family have eyes in front, but they are not in front like for human beings. And predators always have eyes in front. Why? It's a concept of dominion. Why are you dominating in your space? And why do you have opposable thumbs? You have the thumb finger and the other four fingers. It's because in the mystery of design, you have a power grip and the precision, and that grip actually helps you to manipulate objects. That's why we can hold guns. You can drive a car. You can navigate through life by manipulating objects for yourself. The motor skills. Other animals don't have that. Now, why am I bringing this? It's because when you also understand the mystery of design, you are uniquely fashioned and designed as who you are for a specific course and assignment. And even for these people who don't believe in maybe God and religion and all that, there's a way we argue scientifically the mystery of design and purpose. Now, we usually 
Um, this scripture in Ephesians has talked about we are God's masterpiece created anew in Jesus Christ to do good things. What are the good things that you're doing with your life? And we have four types of purpose. The universal purpose for creation. Anything created, including viruses, uh, antelopes, animals, everything, plants, the livers, mountains, have a universal purpose. But there's a purpose for humanity. Like dominion is only for human beings. Then there's purpose for the generation. Why are you in the 21st century? Why were you born this age and you are never born in 19th century? And then finally, there's the purpose of an individual. But unfortunately, that last part is what usually is missing, to find your own space. Now, I want to give you an example as I climax. I met a gentleman who is actually in Nairobi, CBD, and he learns boutique. That boutique has men's suits. And I went there in 2018, and he, um, when I was being introduced there, he told me, Gabriel, thank you for coming to my shop, but today I have nothing for you. However, I actually don't sell suits. He told me he doesn't sell suits, but in the shop, it's full of suits like this. Then I asked, what do you do then? He told me, I don't sell suits. I dress people. Now, that threw me off. Okay, so you have stock here, but you're not selling. You are dressing. And I post a mission question, okay, what is the difference here? Now, and I came to get a whole discovery because I spent one hour. And he told me, if you come and get a suit from me, and it doesn't fit you to one centimeter of your length, even if you give me two million shillings, it's not your suit, I'm not giving it to you. Go back with your money. And you know what? I went back with my money in my pocket. He told me, when I get a suit that fits you, I'm going to call you. The guy doesn't need your money. When I sat there, he had traded more than 50 suits in less than one hour. Well, there's some other boutiques that are just next there, they could even hardly sell one suit in one hour. What is the mystery here? You can be two of you in the same occupation. Two of you are in finance. Two of you are HR. Two of you are in project management. Two of you are in business. But the mindset that you carry is very different. Selling clothes is transactional. Dressing people is redemptive. And when you are selling, the business philosophy is very simple. You want to sell faster, sell more. The person who is dressing people, they say, I want to make sure that you look light. Look the pack. Dress the pack. They are interested on you. It's not profit pass, it is purpose first. Those who are doing transactional business, their sustainability is as long as their product to sell and people are buying, I'm in business. The person dressing is saying, as long as there are people with a need, the need is the connection. I am in business. What's your impact? For the ones who is transactional, they run a side hustle called CSR to do social impact. That's why companies have CSR. For redemptive business, purpose-led businesses, you, your core business itself is the social impact. If you are running a bank, the banking solution is the social impact. You don't have to have a side hustle registering a side hustle department for CSR. Your core business is the CSR. And for the, in terms of profit and wealth creation, it is quite different in terms of mindset. This is why in your purpose is very right. Now, for those who may be asking, how do I discover my purpose? I know this is not a session for that, but these five layers of question can help you. What are your conviction of the needs in people that cause for redemptive impact and you are the one to offer it? Who do you impact in terms of the niche? How do they change and transform? And of course, finally, how can I multiply and sustain the same impact across generations? And as you do this, you're also focusing on who am I becoming to sustain this? If you go through these five layers of reflection, this is something I usually do for 10 good weeks, three months, just to go through these five layers. There's deep truths within each one of them. What is my convictions about a need in people that I need to address? And I am the one, I am the solution. How do I impact them? How do I, how do they change and transform themselves? And then finally, how do I multiply the impact? And when you do this, there are many benefits of uh, purpose-led living. First of all, there's fulfillment. Even mental health become leverage. All your gifts are utilized. You live a fulfilling life. There's transgenerational impact, uh, impact. You avoid wasteful investment. You stop doing that second master's degree. I've met people who are doing their third master's, second PhD, because they made the wrong investment from the word go. Other relationship, you build resilience and you become redemptive to people and the planet. So as I wind up, some of the mindset that you'll acquire in purpose of living is 
Instead of saying what is in it for me, you'll say what is in it by me. Instead of waiting for this to happen as an effect, you become the cause. You make things happen. Instead of being a victim, blaming, excusing, you usually say every brain leaves you lame. You get to exercise dominion and owning and impacting. Instead of survival, you thrive. Instead of having a legit mindset, you have an open mindset and adaptive to nature. My invitation for you every month, we observe the month of October as the International Month of Redemptive Purpose. That's what I do. I host this every month. And that's why we are having this conversation today. And thank you for the invitation. And then finally, in the, the last day of this month, we shall be meeting at KICC for something called Purpose Fest, Annual Purpose Real Leadership Workshop that we shall be having for a whole day on that 1st of October. I know we're going to exchange this. In the previous, we also have done something we call Purpose for Impact Annual Awards. We shall also be doing this on that 1st of October. I want to send my invitation to you. I also do three or four other programs, uh, purpose-led leadership, five purpose-led coaching, and then purpose-led venturing as a coaching series. Matching orders for you as I close up. As you do what you're doing, prepare prayerfully, pursue persistently, proceed positively, plan purposefully. And as this scripture says in the book of Revelation 1.3, Blessed are they that lead here, take to heart what they have had, and also do it. For that which you have seen today, I pray that you're not just going to be a hearer, but also a doer for this. Thank you so much for your time. I know I have rushed very fast, and but I hope maybe I have elevated some consciousness and awareness on living a purpose life. Thank you so much, and God bless you. I want to hand over back to the host. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Gabriel Nyamu. Uh, this is quite illuminating, quite interesting. Yes, man search for meaning. <laughs> that we call man search for meaning. And uh, <clears throat> our hearts are restless until they find rest in God, who I believe is largely about our meaning. Otherwise, we live an empty life. That's why we find people have all the money, but they still kill themselves, commit suicide. That's why we have uh, people who have everything, but they are stressed up. And so it's a good thing that we are having this conversation and we are very happy and grateful. I've not seen a question uh, per se, but I've seen very good comments. And uh, there are, there are people uh, will also want to <coughs> get your contacts. Uh, Montana had placed some uh, survey there. Montana works with Gabriel, so you can fill it in. Again, uh, Montana, you can also place the contacts there. Otherwise, uh, uh, I, I think also uh, because of time, well, maybe just to mention that uh, we, have, we have a dinner coming up. So for people who are here, it would be good to have you. I... I want to pray that uh, Gabriel may uh, get also time to join us for dinner so he can have one-on-one -on -one conversation with uh, the entrepreneurs here, the people here. That aspect of meaning has been one of the, those things that disturbed me from the time I was in class seven, you see. So I started pursuing this agenda uh, quite early and I'm very passionate about it. So I've loved everything that you've uh, shared. So we are going to have a dinner on, on 25th. It's a Friday evening, so there is no excuse. It's not a family day. It's just an outing day. It's going to be fun. An easy one, not very many programs, but quite uh, empowering uh, uh, agenda. And also get, just getting time to sit down and interact with people, share a meal, meet and greet, jo uh, connect and build each other. So I've put the details there. I've also put the details if you'd like to join our Power Monday WhatsApp group. We have a WhatsApp group with over 300 people. And uh, every Wednesday, we just come together to share what we do. We share whether you are in business, you are, in, uh, you are selling what, you are doing what sort of trade, you can always share. Otherwise, every other time, we share about uh, things that can help us grow. Yes, and I love that you said we do not just become carriers of knowledge like a book. I love saying there should be a difference between a human being and a book. You can know as much as a book knows, but a book doesn't act on the knowledge. So we better be acting on the knowledge. 
at this moment in time, I'd like to call Dr. Melvin to give us a vote of thanks, to give you a vote of thanks on our behalf. Uh, Melvin Lima. Thanks, OPP. Yes, yes. Now, OPP, in this case, for people who are here, it doesn't mean other people's properties. It means Otieno, Paul Peter. That is why. name. <laughs> so, uh, uh, get, 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 get on, my friend. You can, you can turn on the video if possible. <laughs> yeah. No, so other people know. It other appears people's... turn on the video. Try it again. Because you've blocked uh, me. Uh, okay, so it's because some people misbehave with video, but not you. <laughs> so you right. just happen to be a, a collateral. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, right. Today we've really been privileged to listen to Gabriel, uh, Gabriel Nyamu, and his message was came in so many layers that we need to unpack it. Uh, but I think the he left us with a call to action it's not about hearing but it's about doing something to get into your purpose so what's your why you can always redefine your why thank you so much gabriel for helping to unpack this very powerful topic of purpose a purpose-driven life a purpose-driven business uh, and a, 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 a life which will create impact on people and planet because we are created by the master creator. And so if we live lives which are not purposeful, then we, we, end, up, uh, we end up being less than what the creator uh, wanted out of us. So uh, I would like to urge all of us on this call to either get in touch with Gabriel or with uh, Montana and uh, find a way of engaging because they're, they're engaging with them at a deeper level so that uh, you can really get to the heart of your, of your purpose. So thank you so much, Gabriel. Thank you so much, Montana, uh, for being with us this morning from, uh, and sharing your insights from all over the world, experience from all over the world, and giving it to us in a nice, neat package. What each one of us does with this information is entirely up to us. <laughs> but uh, personally, I'll, I'll try reach out to, to Gabriel and find out exactly what else he does, what he's written, whether he has podcasts and how I can engage with him further. Uh, the team at the back of uh, Live Your Dream and uh, Power Monday deserve our thanks today for putting this show together for inviting such a powerful speaker like Gabriel to, to share his wisdom with us. And we do not take it off Antonia, Lady Noel, and um, OPP himself for putting this together. Uh, I joined the call a bit late, and I don't know whether Nanfa is here, but... Uh, I really want to thank Nancy for always sharing her poetry with us and enriching our morning on a Monday. So with those few remarks, uh, on behalf of Power Monday, thank you for being here today with us, all of you, and especially the speaker. Back to you, OPP.